Hi once again and welcome to Otto's Garage. Hi, so this episode we're going to have a look at the drive shafts and uh, specifically the TV joints. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Drive shafts. Okay, these are the front two and these are the rear two. Uh, I've harvested those off the uh, back of the old air diff basically. Um, and uh, what I've done now is at the end, at the end of the drive shaft in there, there's a little circlip basically. Uh, so when you get the pliers on that, take the circlip off, that basically the whole CV unit just pops straight off. Um, out of all four drive shafts, these three CV units have got clunks in them. So um, I think what we're gonna have to do is just replace all four of those. At the other end, those ones there are nice and tight. They don't seem to have anything loose on them at all. But these ones you can definitely hear a, a clunk as you're, as you're turning it. So I think it's best why we got it to replace those. So basically the CV unit slides off, um, you've got the spline shaft on the end of the drive shaft there. There's a washer which goes on there. And then basically uh, the new CV unit go on, new boot on it. That's this little fella here. And uh, yeah, away we go. What I'm gonna do anyway is I'm gonna replace the boots on these and so it'll give us a chance to uh, have a look inside there, regrease them, etc. And then obviously they'll all need uh, painting up. Right, there's the inner CVs all removed. And that's the end of the shafts. Don't take any notice of these uh, bearings here. I just use those for uh, spaces on the on the press. They're not off the drive shafts. But that's basically the uh, inner CV joint end of the drive shaft, and then the outers here. So what we've done is we've taken all the boots off, and uh, we're going to split the outer shaft. <laughs> A dead simple way to get the CV off the end of the drive shaft. Just get yourself a vise. We're just going to let gravity do this. A couple of bashes. Out she comes. So where the uh, one end of the drive shaft CV was kept on by the circlip, which we undid before, the other end has got a spring clip on it. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that there, but basically what it is, is like a little, um, not a circlip, but it's similar to a circlip, but it's under its own springiness. And it's that basically that we had to break when we dropped it through the vise there to release the outer CV off the end of it. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is clean that up and then basically uh, we're gonna have a look and just see if there's any horrendous wear or anything in those. I don't think there is because they felt pretty good, but we're gonna clean it up and then we can repack it with some grease. Right, the um, CV's off and I've broken it down into its components basically. Um, there's no horrendous scoring or anything in there so I'm, I'm quite happy just to put that back together now she's been cleaned out and repack it with some grease. Um, quite tricky to get these apart, it's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. Um, and uh, if you have a look on the internet I'm quite sure that somebody shows you how to do that so I'm not going to go through all that now. But you can see that these balls are, you know, they're pretty, pretty good. I've got, you know, there's no markings on them anywhere. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that really. And the race that it goes on as well. Um, so yeah, I'm quite pleased that we'll be uh, popping those back together, get them greased up, uh, and then uh, she will be uh, reassembled onto the existing shaft. Right, on the drive shaft itself, we know which is the inner and outer, the inner, has got a slightly longer spined uh, spine shaft on there um, and then the outer so this is the wheel side this has got this um, where, we, where we drop the CV off um, that's got that spring clip on the end of that but this is a shorter spline so we know that even you know when it gets taken to bits and when you put it back together again short side is outside long spline is diff side basically Right, what I've done now is I've split all the CVs, uh, I've cleaned them up, I've uh, taken all the crap off them basically, and then what I've done is each CV has got its own tub with the internal bearings in it, uh, and then I've marked all of the shafts as well, so we're not going to get anything mixed up, they'll all go back in the position that they came out of. 
So they need a bit of paint and then we can uh, assemble them again. There they are all painted. So uh, we've just got to get the CVs back together and uh, then basically we should be able to get all those on the car. I'm hoping that except for the brakes on the back, uh, we should be able to get the, uh, the rear end completed on that. We'll see how we go. We've got universal joint grease. We've got the cleaned universal joint components and we've mounted the CV joint in the vise. So that's nice and firm there. So what we're going to do now is basically assemble those parts into the UJ. To get the drive shaft back into the uh, CV joint, obviously both are splined, uh, but you've got this little ring here which basically springs out when it goes inside. So what you need to do is compress that, slide the collet over the top of it, which we've done on this one, and then when we engage that into the CV joint and push it home, the collet will slide back and the uh, spring will just pop out and relocate inside the CV. Well, that's the plan. And there it is, bingo. So you can see that's the collet slid back down on the shaft and she's all located. Happy days. The other thing you've got to do, obviously, is make sure you've got the CV boot on. Uh, now, when you do the first one, that's simple enough. And what I've done is I've just slid it on from the other end. A little bit of WD on the shaft and she came straight down. However, when you do the other CV joint, you need to put your boot on first, obviously, and then slide it back up afterwards. I'm still waiting for those to arrive uh, because they're all being replaced. So um, what we'll do is we'll just uh, get the others made up and then when the other CVs arrive for the diff end, we can put those on and get it all together. Well, we've had this delivery uh, from Germany. 
uh, which are basically the uh, it's in there, can't it? the inner CVs. Uh, so these have come from Germany. Uh, well, actually, they've come from China via Poland from Germany, if you like. So uh, they've been halfway around the world. So there's a nice eco-friendly product there for us. But in any event, they're the correct ones. Uh, they come with this uh, pre-fixed boot and flange. So basically all we've got to do now is drop those onto the end of the drive shaft. Got to make sure this goes on first. So we'll slide that down and then basically uh, fit the CV, get some grease all packed around it, get the clip on the end of it. Comes with a new sir clip as well, so that's pretty good. And then basically we can put it all together. Do the other four and we'll get them on the car. That's the CV fitted. Uh, I've packed it in there with grease. It came with grease, so that's great. So we know we've got a decent quantity in there because we put the whole sachet in. Uh, and then we've got these metal clips which go over. You can put a zippy clip on there, but you're going to get a better job with these. And they just close up with a, um, with a pair of vice grip grabs. So when you've locked it over, you just pop it on there, give that a squeeze together, and presto, she's nice and tight. So we'll do the same up at the other end put the clips on that and then basically uh, that one's good to go. One other thing to look at is that we've now refitted the sur clip in the end here so basically uh, that's not going to come off at all now it just needs bolting up. Right there it is that's got it bolted up back to the diff at that end and uh, through the hub carrier at this end so that's that one on, we'll get the other side on, and away we go. In other news! Right, one of the issues that I've got um, with the Prisma HF 4x4 kind of rear end, uh, as opposed to the Evo rear end, is that we've got about 50mm less track on it, I think it is. Something like that, or 50mm each side, I don't know. But either way, um, now we've got these monster arches on, obviously. Um, and using the standard drive shafts down there, that's obviously meant that the face of the uh, wheel mounting is further inboard than the arch would like it to be. So, we've got a solution. Um, got in touch with the company who do uh, CNCing, basically, and um, they actually make these hub spacers. These are concentric hub spacers, basically. Um, so they're going to push it out 50 mil, but it's not just like a wheel spacer. I don't think of it as just being a wheel spacer, which obviously, you know, you put a lot of strain on extended or overextended wheel nuts or lugs or whatever. So what these guys do is they take a, a, a solid block of alley uh, and they machine it down and then they put an insert. So you can see down there you've got inserts which are threaded. So although it's alley, the insert itself is steel. Um, so you're bolting onto steel and what it then does is it mounts on the face of the hub like that and it mounts over so it's locked on tight that's locked on tight there you know you can't move up and down left or right uh, and then basically you bolt that down through to the existing um, hub and then the wheel nut the wheel sits on this outer face and the nuts or the bolts go through into the metal inserts so the whole thing is quite strong actually when it's all bolted on uh, and of course what it does is it pushes the wheel up um, I could have had some wheels made perhaps with a greater offset on them but of course um, the trouble is then you're starting to just get into territory of getting everything custom made and with wheels like that that can be quite expensive so uh, what we've got is what we've got um, the car's pretty light in any event, so I haven't got any issue. It's not like it's a big saloon car sitting on those. But we'll give her a crack, we'll see what it's like, and uh, see what the overall effect is with regard to looks and handling, of course. It's the main one. Uh, but that's basically that. So when we've got all the back end bolted up and everything, we'll be able to get those on properly, and we'll be able to uh, fit the wheels for the final time. Nice bit of engineering. At the hub end, of course, where it uh, just get that right, where it comes through, you can see the um, thread on there. So there's a big thrust washer that goes in down that, and then basically a new knot's got to go on. Uh, and you can see in the end of the drive shaft, the spline just there. Let me come down this way. The end of the drive shaft, it's got a recess. So what happens is that the 
crown of the locking nut when you wind that on and I'm not going to tighten it up now but obviously we're just going to get it on in place so that it doesn't fall out and then what happens is when you've torqued that up and probably the best way to do that is to get that on the ground in gear handbrake on it chock it up whatever and then we can get a torque wrench on here uh, but basically where you've got that little cut out there you then end up tapping that in with a hammer and that acts as a locking mechanism stop that falling off afterwards cool Okay, it's the uh, end of another weekend and we've had some glorious weather out there today, but that means we've got to sign off. So I'm going to say thanks for watching Otto's Garage. See you next time. Hopefully I'm going to get those brakes back pretty soon. They have been dropped off back at the comp brake. So we should be able to uh, get the solution we're after on those, get the front brakes on and uh, then we can get the wheels on all being well. But uh, till then, have a good one. Stay safe. Thanks for watching Otto's Garage.